Today I'm giving you not one, but two methods for making a decent amount of money after the rear patch. Today I'm giving you not one, but two ways of making a decent amount of money after rear was nerfed. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Today we're going to look at not one but actually two different methods. Well they're very similar but they are yet a little different um, for making a decent amount of credits after this uh, the rear patch. Um, and I'm going to divide this up into two methods because one of them is going to be more focused around newer players. That's going to be well a simpler, it's not that it's it's simpler or that the other one's going to be more advanced, more difficult to do. It's just that it works better for newer players, whereas the advanced method that we're going to go over afterwards is more geared towards endgame players who have access to some of the uh, the endgame stuff that you maybe do not have access to at the beginning of the game. So depending on where you are, either method might be more, might be more suitable for you, or just to liking. I mean, the feel for it is is very different for the two methods as well. That being said. There are a lot of similarities between the two methods. So I, would, I even though you, you're probably going to, if you want to go for the last one, the advanced method, still watch this simple or uh, the first introduction to the first method, because I'm going to go over a lot of details that's the same in both of them. And I'm not going to go over them in the in the last method. So if you want to get the full out of it, if you want to properly understand it, I'll suggest you watch both of them. Um, but they're coming up both in this video. So without further ado, let's get going. So let's look at the simple method to start with. In terms of hard points and utility mounts, uh, it's, you can really do whatever you want. It's not important, you're not going to need it, so do whatever you feel like. In terms of core internals, here I would recommend going for at least upgrade your frameshift drive. Jump rates is going to uh, help you speed up your run a little bit. Um, don't spend too much time. You can see I've engineered this ship uh, quite a lot, but again, it's not that important, so if you don't... Um, have the time or you don't want to, you don't have to engineer it, but I would recommend at least doing a little bit for your jump range and it's going to come in very handy later on. But optional internals is where all the interesting, interesting stuff is really happening. Now, what you need here is you're going to need a planetary vehicle hangar with an SRV on board. Then you're going to need an advanced discovery scanner and you're only going to need this for the first run. Once you're done with the first one, you can take this off and put something else on it. Um, but you're going to need it to get things started. Um, shield generator is not mandatory, but I would recommend putting it on just because we're going to spend a lot of time uh, landing on planets and docking and undocking from stations. And if you don't want to waste your money repairing the hull of your ship, I would recommend at least a small shield generator to take the blunt of small bombs. Then in terms of cargo, you're going to need at least four tons of cargo. And... If you have access to the corrosion resistant cargo racks from Professor Palin, I highly recommend that you use those because we are going to pick up toxic material that's going to corrode your ship, but we're not going to pick up that much in the simple method here. So you can go with normal cargo racks and then just repair the modules. Maybe then you would want to fit an uh, auto field maintenance unit to repair on the fly um, if you have the spare, but then you're going to need at least four tons of cargo. If you don't know where you get these, you get them by heading to um, to Meyer, which is right here, I think. Yeah. And if we open up the uh, the system map for Meyer, we should be able to see. Come on. There we go. We can now see here. We have on Meyer A three A. We have the Palin's research center, and you have to unlock Professor Palin. And then you can go to this, and here you will have these cargo racks for sale. But again, Palin is one of the last engineers that most people unlock, at least he's a bit difficult to unlock. So if you don't have him unlocked, you can just go with the normal cargo racks and then fit an auto field maintenance unit and repair along the way. But what we're going to do is we are going to head out and we're going to dock ourselves at Obsidian Orbital once we have our ship fitted. And as soon as we land at Obsidian Orbital, we're going to get a, a mail from Professor Palin. And you can see here, this is actually a mission request. And in this, in this uh, mission here, he is asking us to collect 
um, one unit of Thargoid technology samples, and he's going to pay us 5.2 millions. Now, this is not the, the mission that we want. We want a, a mission where we want there, uh, to pick up four units, and there are different type of cargo that he can request. There are the technology samples, there are biomass, and there are Thargoid resins. And we want um, either of these three where he's requesting four uh, units. Furthermore, if you look at this, this material is to be delivered to Daniel's Progress. We want missions that are paid, uh, that we have to deliver it back to Obsidian Orbital. So, but problem is, if we decline this mission, we're not going to get another one um, right away. So what we have to do now is we need to log out to, uh, to the main menu. I'm currently in, uh, in solo mode. And then you need to log into another session. That could be I'm logging into my private group now. And once we're logged back in, we're going to launch right away. And then we just need to get outside the station, wait a few seconds, request docking, and then dock again. And once we are back on the landing pad, we're going to get another mission offered to us. Now, this is a little, um, it can be a little time consuming. But luckily, these missions with the, with four units are pretty common, so uh, so it's not too much of a problem. So again, we're just gonna get right outside the docking hatch, turn the ship around, and this is where having a maneuverable ship comes in handy. Um, so let's see if we can get a. There we go, docking request, and we're just gonna get back on the landing pad. And there we go, new mission offered to us. Let's see if we're a little bit more lucky. There we go. Four units of Thargoid Biomatter for 23 million to Obsidian Orbital. That's a very good mission. So we're definitely going to accept that. Unfortunately, these missions cannot be stacked. So we have to just take the one mission. And once we have the mission we want, we're going to jump into the galaxy map and we're going to hop to the system HIP 17125, which is not too far away. It's actually fairly close, 36.8, 36.6 light years. Um, and this is where jump, good jump brains can come in handy. Um, so you don't have to go in a long way around to get to the system. Um, this is going to save you some time having fewer jumps. So um, let's launch now that we have our mission and let's head up to the system. Okay, once you're in the system, this is, of course, when you're going to need your advanced discovery scanner to scan the system. I've already done this previously, so I don't need to scan it again. That's why you can remove it after the first run. Um, but once you scan the system, you're going to head to Planet 3 Moon A, which is this moon here. So um, it's just over 1100 light seconds out, so it's not too bad. But uh, let's head up there. We're now pretty close to the planet, and once you're out here, you're going to come to a set of coordinates and it's going to be at minus 65.81 and 48.86. I'm going to put it in the description as well with the together with the system name and the planet. If you're not familiar with navigating by planetary coordinates, I have an instructional video of it uh, on it up, so click in more info icon for that. But this is again, this is only something you have to do the first time. You can see here, I actually have the location here as a uh, navigation point. So I have it here, the crash site in my, um, in my navigation panel. And I'm going to show you now how you do that. But the first time you come here, you will have to navigate by coordinates. So again, your first run is going to take a bit longer than the subsequent ones. But again, as we get closer here, we can see we actually have a crashed Thargoid ship on the surface here. It's actually a Thargoid Scout. Um, so let's get this uh, this ship down. It is very, very twitchy. But luckily it's very flat here, so it should be easy, as soon as my landing gear is out, to get down on the surface. Okay, so we are out, we are out in our SRV. And the first thing, and again, this is what you do now, is what's something you only do the first time you're here. This is what you do to get the crash site as a navigation point, so you can just lock it and go straight down here, so it's a lot faster next time. And need to scan it, but problem is you can see here, you can't really log on to it, and that's because I think it's a mistake, but the point actually spawns underneath the ground. So you have to like fly up, and then keep clicking your, your lock, Button until you find it. It can be a little tricky to find, but you just have to keep at it until you actually manage to uh, to get a lock on it. So put all pips into your engines, fly up over it, 
Now we can actually see the lock point here. Oh, that's not it. There we go. I got a lock. You can see it down there on the ground. We have to keep flying, keep pointing at it. And I, of course, can't scan it because there's your uplink lock already scanned. But you have to keep flying with your nose pointing downwards and then scanning it while you're doing that. It's quite tricky and it's going to take a few attempts. But once you complete the scan and you got the information that you now scanned the uplink, then you're going to get it as a navigation point here. So it was a crash site. Uh, and that means you can now go there every time without navigating by coordinate because now you have logged into your um, navigation computer. But the main reason why we're here, that's because all around this uh, site, you can see here there are all these canisters here lying around. And of course, some of these are going to be Thargoid biomatter, which was, of course, the stuff that we needed for our missions. So you guessed it. We're just going to go here. We say we're going to need four of these. So I already have my cargo hatch open. So there's one, we can go to a contacts, there's another one, let's pick that up. And you can of course only hold two in your SOV at the time. So once you've got those two, you're just going to head, whoops, nice driving there. Just going to head back to the ship and we're going to transfer it over. So once you're onto your ship, you're just going to go down here and you're going to go transfer cargo. Click that. Twice, I actually have some Thargoid resin from a previous mission, but uh, that doesn't matter. Um, and then click transfer down here. And now you transfer it to your ship. So now you can go and pick up the last one here. Now, of course, we need four, but there was only three of them available. But luckily, every time you board hop, this stuff is going to respawn. So there we go. And I'm not going to bother going back. I'm actually going to jump straight out to the menu from here. And then I'm gonna go, I was just a private group, so I'm just gonna jump straight into solo play. And as soon as we load it back in, we can now go over here to our contacts, and there's the last bio sample that we need. It is random what uh, what spawns here, so sometimes you might be unlucky. Oh, and if I remember to open my cargo hatch, this is probably gonna be a lot easier. So now that we have the four units we need, pretty easy to get we are just gonna go back to our ship board it and then fly back to obsidian orbit and back at the station all we're gonna do is just to go into the mission board here and here we can now hand in the mission but before we do that so i just want to have a quick look at the mission here you can see here this one paid 23 and a half million credits and a trip like this take around 20 minutes but these the mission i got here was, was actually one of the more high paying ones so to give you guys a more realistic image of what you're gonna uh, be able to get let's say you can get around 20 million per run sometimes you're gonna be lucky you're gonna get these for 23 million sometimes you're gonna be unlucky and you're gonna get the dark and resin missions for only 17 million so but i think uh, on an average you can probably get around um 20 million per run um, and if you can do three runs per hour in 20 minutes, I mean, again, if you're lucky with your mission um, and you get one the next one straight away without having to dock and redock a lot of times, so you could probably do these runs in um, in 15 minutes. So you could do four per hour. But again, I'm going to go with a little high estimate here because I want to try and give you an as realistic result or a realistic estimate as possible. So if we say you're going to give an average of 20 million per run and it takes 20 minutes to complete, that means you're going to make around 60 millions per hour on this simple run, which is not too bad. Um, this is actually very respectable and it counts towards your trade rank as far as I can, as far as I know. So let's hand in the mission here and uh, there we go. Collect our 23 and a half million credits. Now let's take a look at the advanced method. Now for this, you're going to need a large ship. You're going to need a ship with as many internal compartments as you can get. So an anaconda would not be a bad choice. Outfitting wise, it's not too different than what we did in the simple. We are still not going to bother with hard points or utility mounts. Core internals still going to be focused around jump range and try to make the ship as light as we can to get a decent jump range out of it. Optional internals is where it's a little um, little different. We're still going to fit a shield because I like to have my shields. We still have our planetary vehicle hanger. But for the rest, 
we're just going to fit as many corrosive resistant cargo racks as we can. And you're just going to get as many as you can possibly fit on here. Um, how many do we have here? Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have, uh, have eight, oh, nine, nine actually. Wow. Um, so that should give us, uh, what, 18 tons of cargo space. You can, again, if you're doing this and you're starting out with the advanced method, then you will need the advanced discovery scanner on your first run to scan the system just as we did with the simple one. But again, after you've done the first run, you can swap that out for another um, cargo rack. Okay, so once you've done that, we are once again heading over to Meyer and to Obsidian Orbital. And at the station, we of course are greeted with the usual mail from Palin. And what we're looking for this time is a mission for Thargoid Resin. And this time it doesn't matter. I mean, the other one, we only wanted the one with a quantity of uh, four, but this time it doesn't matter. The only thing that we worry about right now is if we can get Thargoid Resin or we can get uh, Daniel, or the, sorry, we can get it to, to, to Obsidian Orbit. Those are the two factors we go for now. And the reason why we do that is in a bit, we're going to go out and we're going to collect a lot of Thargoid Resin. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to deliver a lot of missions at the same time, just one after another. But problem is that the these biological matter, and I've got a lot of them um, today, but in general, I think you it's easier to get the resin missions. So when we come back, if we don't want to spend too much time board hopping, then um, then it's a good idea to, to go for the resin ones. But again, you can go for the other ones if you feel like it. The important part is that you just start out by getting a mission with the right materials to the right station. Now, this one, regardless of the material, payout is actually pretty good, but this is to the wrong station. So we have to go and uh, decline this mission. And just as before, we log out, we log into another session, and then we undock and we dock again to try and get a new mission. And here we go, I just got a mission here. In this case, it was uh, three units of Thargoid Resin delivered to Obsidian Orbital. So we're just gonna accept this mission. Um, and as before, let's see, there it is. As before, we're gonna head out to uh, HIP 17125. And exactly as before, you come into the system, first time you're here, you need to scan the system, you go to the coordinates as we talked about when we talked about the first method. First time you're here, you're going to scan the ship. And again, we've been over all this once before. And this time we're gonna do pretty much the same as before. Now we got a mission for, for resin. So we're just gonna begin and pick up, whoops, all the resin there is. I think that was actually the only one. Yeah, all the other ones was uh, tech samples. So, oh, that one as well. That was biomat. Okay, so, um. Once we picked up all those that instance, which as before, we're locking out, locking into a new session, and we're just gonna keep picking up resin, and handing it over to the ship until the cargo hold is completely full. Once you have your last batch, as I do now, we just bought the ship and we of course head back to Obsidian Orbital. And once we're back at the station, we are of course just gonna go ahead and hand in the um, the mission in here to the mission board, hand it in. And that's the first mission now handed in. And now we're just gonna go back to the same thing we did when we initially started out. We are going to log out to the main menu. We're gonna log back into another session, whole thing again, undock, redock your ship. Um, until you get another mission for Thargoid Resin delivered to Obsidian Orbital. Once you get a mission like that, you're going to accept it and you're going to hand it in right away because you already have, look, I still have 15 tons of Thargoid Resins left. So, and I can just keep doing this, just keep going over and over and over um, until I do not have enough cargo space to, um, to actually hand in the mission. And at this point, when when you when you don't no longer have any more uh, have enough cargo so let's say i have two tons left and i get a mission to deliver three of them i'm still going to accept the mission and then you're actually back to where you started before you're just not going to bother by two you keep them in your cargo hold and you just head out again 
and you fill up your ship. So in terms of money making for this method, um, you can get 18 tons of cargo, it's a corrosion resistant cargo when you do this in an anaconda, right? But on average, you're going to end up with two tons that you're going to bring out again. So that means effectively you're only handed in, handing in 16 tons every time you go out. Um, and the missions for Thargoid Resin, they pay on average four and a half million per ton. So four and a half million per ton, you have 16 tons that you had in, that's 72 million um, credits. And, well, let me just focus on my, uh, on my landing here. That's 72 million in, uh, in three quarters of, uh, of an hour. Um, because that's about the time it takes. It takes about three quarters of an hour. Um, so if we're looking at, um, at three quarters of an hour and 72 million, that's going to give you, um, that's going to give you 92 millions per hour. Let's round that down. That's around 90. And again, this is going to depend on how lucky you are with your roles, uh, with your roles, with your missions, when you get them, if you're very unlucky, you, um, you are gonna, you're of course going to spend more time on docking and docking all the time, but again, what you also can do to, if you want to optimize this, if you feel like you want to try with other materials, like instead of going with the resin, go with the biomass um, or the, the techno samples, you can do that as well. That's completely up to you. It's methods completely the same that you just choose a material, go for it. I went with resin um, because it seems like those missions are slightly more common than the other ones. Um, but that's really up to you. You can do what you want. Now, last thing I, um, I want before we, uh, we end this video off. It is, I would really like you to consider subscribing to the channel. If you find this video useful, if you find this kind of videos useful, subscribe to the channel because I will always try to keep you guys up to date on these methods as they come. And if there's any updates, if, if somebody comes up with a clever way to optimize this, I am of course going to let you guys know. Um, so anyway, if you like the video, give it a like down below and well, yeah, consider subscribing to the channel. And also next time, I'll see you guys in space.